you. I haven't forgotten anything you have, honey. Did I cover everything? Okay, as far as you know, check with my secretary. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the privilege of being able to meet with the body of Christ. And Lord, there is no partiality with you. You love each one of us the same. And we thank you that there'll be no partiality in us that we will love all your children the same. And we just thank you, Father, that you have given us your love. You have shed your love in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And we can love and bless people. And we just thank you for what you've done in our lives and what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do. And we just want to thank you that we know that we are close to to the last days, that the coming of the Lord is at hand, and we're all busy getting the gospel out in many different ways, and we just want to thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, sometimes uh, people say, well, Bob, what should I read in the Bible? And, and the Word of God has a way of assisting us. How many of you know that? That the Bible says that the Word of God assists us. Uh, when you make a cake, I, I've seen, um, uh, Justin, do you do that? Do you sift your flour? Do you sift your flour? Sometimes. Sometimes you sift it. Okay. So you sift it to make it more finer. Is that right? right. Make it more finer. It comes so, out better. what'd she say? It comes out better. It comes out better. Now, how about that? Now, if you, <laughs> if you feel like God is sifting you, you're going to come out better. And uh, I want to turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, okay? And it talks about the Word of God sifting us, and that's not a bad thing. So that's found in Hebrews 4, 12. It'll be on the board. Now, notice this. For the Word that God speaks is alive. God has spoken this word, and it's alive. You don't have to try to understand it. Just read it, and it will begin to do something. It will start sifting you. You will see, uh, you will find out that you are either a soulish person, or you are a fleshly person, or you are a spiritual person, okay? And all of us have that mixture sometimes, and that's why God's word has to sift us and sift out all of those ingredients that's in us that does not glorify him. Now, how many understand what I just said? How many didn't? Okay, some of you are not here. Okay. <laughs> Listen to what it says. For the word of God, it speaks, is alive and full of power, making it active, operating, energizing and effective it is sharper than any two-edged sword that's why some folks don't want to read it <laughs> it'll cut that cancer out that that old soulish attitude that old fleshly attitude that old ungodly attitude so many times that is stored up in our souls and God you know has to sanctify our spirit, soul, and body. All right. Hallelujah. This is getting good already. Sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit, and it's hard for me to see that in of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and notice sifting. Everybody say sifting. sifting. Ooh. And analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of the heart. Whew. My my um Spencer, would you take this right here? My right uh, ear thing just went out. It sings to me when it goes out. It goes, ding, ding, ding. Here you go. Here you go. Whoop. 
take, take that one out and put a new one in. It starts singing to me when, it, when it's running down. Our brother was so honest this morning as he was teaching us in the men's class that he volunteered, told us that the Lord assisted him this week. That brother Willie back there, on that back, back seat back there, that was Willie Tillman. Yeah, see him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I know they're both good looking, but I'm talking about Willie there. See, I understood everything he was saying because I understand what sifting's all about. And if you're going to walk with God, you might as well understand that you're going to be sifted. And it might be your husband that'll sift you. Might be your wife that'll sift you. Well, I want a divorce. That ain't good. You marry another one, it'll sift you. Because God, it's God behind all of that. Because, see, he wants to sanctify us, spirit, soul, and body. Everybody say spirit, soul, and body. See, a lot of our troubles is in our soul. The soul area. When Adam and Eve fell, they fell from the spiritual arena into the soulish arena and begin to think that they could just live on knowledge that their soul accumulates by investigating this and investigating that, and they begin to live off their soul and cut their spirit off. And God had to, of course, we know that we have to be born again. Did you get it, son? Thank you so much. You can give that to Susan. Now, y'all watch out. I'm going to be able to hear you now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So we're talking about soul, spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Your soul will get offended real quick. Anybody in here has ever been offended? But you see, you have to let God do that sifting in you where you don't get offended every time somebody looks at you cross-eyes. How many know what I'm talking about? Most of you, most of you work out on a job. Do you have anybody on your job that offends you or assists you? Yeah, you look out like it being offended, you know. Yeah, that thing just cut in. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, as I look back on my experience in dealing with so many people, and I used to boy, man, I tell you what, if I could just get away from that person, I, it seemed like, they're like that porcupine. Remember, we were talking about the porcupine that's always sticking you, you know what I mean? And, and, and God uses people to sift you, to check out what's in your soul. Because you see, you love from the heart. God looks at the heart. God poured his love into our soul. Heart. Heart. And our heart is where the love of God is, okay? So all of us are being sifted. Now, as you read the Word of God, it will sift you. It will divide and show you if you're open to the truth. If you've closed your heart and you decided that you, you don't understand about spirit, soul, and body, and you, you analyze everything by the soul and the mind, then you're going to miss it. Revelation does not come into the soul. Revelation comes into our spirit by the Spirit of God. Then it goes up into our intellect. And then God begins to enlighten us to understand the revelation that we got in our spirit. See, God is the Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We are spirit beings. And we, have, we live in a body and we have a soul. Now, as I talk, the Lord might be showing you that's what you've been living by, your soul. It gets offended easy. It gets cast down. How many has ever, what, what, what did uh, David said? Oh, my soul, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He had to command his soul to bless the Lord. So why are you cast down, oh, soul? So you'll always be cast down if you're living out of your soulish life. That's why Paul came to that place. He didn't live. He lives now by the life of another. And that's the life of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now, God will teach you and show you this as you listen to him. Because Willie went through such a great experience this week. And God talking to him. And he began to understand 
some of his problems. He's a good man. He's a minister. He's a man of God. But he's realizing that the old soul is going to have to be sanctified if he's going to enjoy the peace of God 24-7. Because that soul up there just will put you down every time. Y'all you know, excuse me while I drink a little of this. That's water, yeah. I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 3. See, you can't change yourself. You have got to submit to God and let him change you on the inside. How many of you know that? You can know this whole Bible. In fact, the Bible says knowledge puffs up. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Knowledge puffs up. Now, I know the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. That is the knowledge that comes from the Holy Spirit. And not the knowledge that comes out of our souls or the souls of men. And you may disagree with me. That's okay. I'll still love you. But if you live long enough, you'll find out that I'm right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3. That's in the Bible. I know I read it the other day. I had the greatest experience uh, yesterday. A good uh, Jehovah Witness came by and seen me. So I said, have a seat on the bench. I got a bench over there under the shade, and we, we just had a great time. I think he's becoming a believer. I believe you do that. Now, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 on the board. I want to show you something in the Word of God. Now, Paul is praying. This is his desire. He's saying, may he, God, grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced and mightily, uh, with mighty power in your soul. Hey, you're right. Now let's look at that. Be strengthened and reinforce with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Whew. Now, how do you activate that? You say, Lord, I really see that I, my inner man needs to be uh, uh, reinforced. I, I, I realize that it needs your power. Uh, I realize, God, it needs to be strengthened. See, your spirit man will sustain you in trouble. Your spirit man, if it's strong enough, will sustain you in sickness. Your spirit man will sustain you in whatever problem or situation that you might find yourself because that's where the Holy Spirit will strengthen you in your inner man with might. Now, how do you appropriate that like you appropriate everything else? The Bible says, if I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the mouth is involved here in getting saved. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. If I will confess with your mouth, the Lord is strengthening me in my inner man with might. By his Holy Spirit, I will become strong in him. See, so you appropriate everything by faith, by speaking and, 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 and uh, speaking it and activating the word of God. By your confession. As you confess. All right. Let's, let's, let's see what Paul says. I can do all things through Christ. That should be your confession every day. I can do all things. I can wash these dishes. You know, Susan won't let me do the dishes. I don't know why. You know, I go out, work on the line more, get my hands all greased up, and I want to come in and do the dishes. Because that dishwasher will clean that uh, um, grease off your hands. 
I don't think you got it yet, but anyway. But she won't let me do it. And, uh, you know, I used to get offended at that. <laughs> she won't let me do the dishes. Then I found out the reason why. She didn't want all that grease in the, in, in the dishwasher, you know. But you, 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 begin to, you, know, you begin to get enlightened after a while. But, but we need to understand and we need to appropriate the strength of the Lord for our inner man. Our inner man needs to get stronger. We need, to be, we need to be sifted by the word of God. And God will use certain people to sift you. If you were honest, I guarantee you, you would come up here and, and if you would be honest. And, and you, would, you would give a testimony. Uh, <clears throat> anybody in your life that sifts you. Anybody in your life that sifts you. Not assist you, but sift you. <laughs> Somebody want to testify? Duh. Some of you don't know what to make of that. You don't want to expose your, your wife, do you? Or your husband. <laughs> How about your next door neighbor? The Bible says love your next door neighbor as you love yourself. Oh my goodness. If your soul is not renewed yet, if your soul has not been sanctified yet, you will not be able to love your neighbor because that soulish power is very strong. And let me say this. And Satan works through the soulish power of man. Well, that's one. <laughs> One's got it. <laughs> Satan works through our soulish powers that man has. And the, and, the, and the more you get delivered from that soulish life and it becomes sanctified by the Spirit of God, then the more you will operate out of your spirit. Oh, you will use your brain. Yes, you will use uh, uh, your soul. But it has been sanctified. It has been cleansed. It's been renewed. And God has separated. Notice the Word of God divides. Everybody say the Word of God divides okay someone says well how do i know that I'm, I'm i'm working out of my soul well when you read the word of god uh it'll come very clear to you now let's go to the next verse and 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 17 and this is what if paul is praying for the christians may christ through your faith actually dwell settle down abide make his permitted home in your hearts or your spirit may you be rooted Deep in love and founded securely on love. Amen. Now, this is very important. The kids must be having a party back there. I think I'll go back with them. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Now, is, is the Lord sifting right there? Now, look at that. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in you, in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Now, you've got to ask yourself a question. Am I rooted deep in his love? If I'm rooted deep in his love, what would be the manifestation of that in my life? I need to say that again. You're right. If we are deeply rooted in his love, we will find ourselves secure, secure in his love. And all of that insecurity that causes us to do stupid things, causes division in our homes, uh, between us and our friends, it will all be gone because we are, no identification, our identity in Christ. We are rooted in his love, and his love changes everything. All right. Now ask yourself, let us sift him again. Ask yourself, are you rooted deep in love? But how you find out. Let somebody do something you don't like.
See a few folks shaking your head. How many love me? Not much, but you're working at it. I know that's good. You, you just let somebody do something you don't like. We find how deeply you rooted in God's love. I thought my batteries went out again and I didn't hear anybody say amen or nothing. Let somebody do something you don't like. And what kind of manifestation comes? If you're rooted deep in his love, let me tell you what you'll do. Put 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 up there. Here's what you'll do if you're rooted deep in his love. Excuse me. First Peter chapter 3, verse 9. If you are rooted deeply and you're grounded, and I'm talking about myself too. And I'm just like you. I want everybody to look at me for a moment. I have blown it too. Oh, the pastor's blown it. I can't believe it. Yeah, because I'm human. And Susan... She wouldn't tell on me. <laughs> now he's just a nice boy all the time, 24-7. <laughs> Never. Now, if you're rooted and grounded in his love, this is the manifestation that will come forth. You will never return evil for evil. You will never in, uh, return insult for insult. Scolding, tongue-lashing, Berating anymore. Because love does not act uncommonly. Hardly even notices when it's wrong. Susan, would you come up and quote that uh, 1 Corinthians 13 for us? We might need to be sifted a little bit here this morning with that. Yeah, five. Oh, she'll, she'll do the whole thing. Yeah, starting with five, whatever you want to start with. Yeah, tell us about that. We're going to check ourselves and see if we are rooted and grounded in love. Okay. Love is patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It hardly even notices when others do it wrong. It's never glad about injustice, but rejoices when truth wins out. Thank you, darling. That's all I can take. <laughs> How are we doing, church? <laughs> Anybody been sifted yet? <laughs> You'll have to explain all this to them later on. <laughs> See, we measure ourselves not by others, but by the Word of God. The Word of God is the one that assists us and shows us ourselves. It reveals uh, our real self. Now, it's not about combination. Everybody say, it's not about combination. If you're saved, you can't get no more saver. But we're talking about conduct. We're talking about being conformed into the image of the Son of God. We're talking about a group of people that, that love and, and care where revival can break out in that midst of those people. Amen. So remember, that there is a sifting going on in the church today. I'm not just talking about how many of you know we talk to the world? You, you got you to understand, I ain't just talking to you folk. I'm talking about people all over because we we're on the Internet. How many of you understand that? So if I say something that you don't like, don't get offended. I'm talking about the whole church. I'm concerned about the whole church. Paul was concerned about the whole church, the universal church. I'm concerned about the universal church, every believer. A true man of God is concerned about the whole church. So, we've all been sifted, but there's going to be a double time sifting that's going to come. 
And God is going, his word is going to come, out, come alive to us. Why? To, because it will divide and show us what our spirit, soul, and body. I said spirit, soul, and body. And you will realize, you know, I've been acting. I, I've really been living out of my soul. Now, all of us have been there, and we all live to a, a, a degree uh, uh, in that soulish thing. But then God is working and showing us that soulish. Well, I tell you what, if he does that again, I'm going to punch him in the nose. Is that spirit or soul? Huh? I'm going to punch him in the nose. Is that spirit or soul? Hey, you're getting it. See, see, it's so simple, but, 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 but we think that uh, somehow I think we, we think we've arrived yet, you know, and that we haven't. I hope I didn't break your heart. Uh, I haven't either, and you haven't either, but we are in a process of what we call sanctification. And God is dividing and letting us know. And let me tell you something. As you, as you learn certain things that we have practiced so much in the soulish realm, God will begin to show us, if we're honest, if we really want truth. Now, if we want to live in deception, we have a will and we can choose to live in deception. Or we can choose to live in the truth and new truths should come to you every day. When you read the Bible this next week, it ought to show you something about your attitude. It ought to start dividing spirit, soul, and body that you will learn. Oh, this is spirit. This is soul. This is soulish. This is fleshly. And the Bible brings all that out, those three areas, spirit, soul, and body. Now, listen. Let's read on. Let's get on to, uh, all right, let's finish that. Boy, that's powerful. That'll, let's see if that word will sift you. Never return evil for evil. How many people never do that? <clears throat> let's just stop there and let it sift. <laughs> Come on, church, don't lie to me. <laughs> never return evil for evil? Or insult for insult. Let me, let me say, tell you something. If somebody uh, renders evil for, uh, to you, you know who's, who's, who's going sift, to be sifted? He's going to be sifted. Because God says that, that he has no respect of person. He doesn't care what our position is. If I do something wrong to you, he's going to deal with me. If you do something wrong to me, he's going to deal with you. That's in the Bible. Yep. Colossians. Mm -hmm. I think it was 324, but we'll get on that later. He will punish me if I do something bad to you, and he'll punish you. Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. Look what it says now. Tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings. Praying for their welfare and happiness and protection and truly pitying and loving them. But you can't do it unless the love of God has been rooted and grounded in your heart. That your inner man has tasted the love of God. And it lives there. And it dominates there. And it controls you. And you will always bless that person. Regardless of what they do. It will just be such a natural thing to bless them. You don't have to strain at it. Because, see, you're rooted, grounded in his love. You see, you take a bush outside, and if it's rooted and grounded in the earth, it will draw up the nourishment from that ground and produce fruit, if it's a fruit tree. See, when we are rooted and grounded in his love, everybody look at me, not people coming in, rooted and grounded in his love, the nourishment in that love, the very character of Christ is in there, and we draw his strength, his life, his will, his desires into our being, and we produce the fruit of that. 
That's a whole lot better than trying to be better. Because, see, God has begun a good work in us, and He will. He will. Not us. Good. That's one, one. He will what? Continue that work in us until the coming of the Lord. So don't be discouraged. But, uh, but get, your, get your thinking straight and realize that it is God that has birthed you into the kingdom. And it is God that is going to sanctify you. It is God that is going to strengthen you in your inner man and cause you as you reach out in faith and proclaim it by faith, rooted and grounded in his love. And you will just simply, the, 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 the apple tree does not strain to produce apples. It can't help from Producing apples because it is a apple tree. apple tree. You got it. How many sees that? Yeah, it's oh Lord, thank you. How many years I have strained and grunted and tried to uh, change my, myself and don't work that way no. until the revelation of God's word began to come into me and God began to teach me that it will be Him that will change me. From glory to glory. And where's that found? Right. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse, I think it's 17, 18. You don't have to turn there. But he will change us from glory to glory. How? By his Holy Spirit. As we allow his Holy Spirit to do that work in us, he does the changing. Amen. He does the saving. He does the sanctifying work. He does the changing in our hearts. Somebody got to say hallelujah on that. That ain't religion, folks. That's true Christianity teaching. Look, look what it says. Protection and truly pitying and loving them. For now, for know that to this you have been called. You've been called for what? Curse them out. Throw spitballs at them. Rocks at them. Kick them on the chins. Talk about them. Tell other people about them. Gossip. See, if you're doing that, you're living in the soul. That alone shows you you're still soulish. You've not been rooted and grounded in his love because his love produces what Susan said a little while ago. All right. How many do you understand where you are? How many love me now? Huh? Some of you straining. <laughs> I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because this thing works in my life too. I got one finger pointing at you and I got three pointing at myself. I think I'll do it this way. <laughs> All right. Why, Lord? Look at verse 18. Woo, this thing gets rich. Oh, Father. Next verse, 18. Ephesians 3. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I'm sorry. Uh, Ephesians 3. 3.18. Ephesians 3.18. Here we go. Notice this now. That you may have the power and be strong to comprehend and grasp. What is going to make us strong? What, 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 what about this power to be strong? Where are we going to get that from? Everybody say God. So he's praying that you may have the power and be strong to comprehend and grasp with all the saints God's devoted people, which we are, notice, the experience of that love. Everybody say, experience, experience. of God's love. God's love. Let's just pass out right here for a while. That we might experience, have the experience of that love. Now notice this, well, that, 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 that sort of makes me weak in the knees right there. 
But then it says, what is the breadth and length and height and depth of it? And what is it? Love. Love. So God, wherever we have been resisting you and not in allowing you to do that work in us, that we might be un- able to understand that the depth, the width, the height, and the length of your love. Forgive us, Lord, from, re- from quenching the Holy Spirit and us just letting our soul dominate our lives. And we just come back, Father, in the Spirit and say, Lord, do thy work in your servants that we might experience that love. I'm not talking about intellectually, but you experience it in your heart. And that is what changes us. It's the love of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Put that on the board. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. I'm getting weak in the knees preaching this message. It's so powerful. For the love of Christ controls. When I first started reading that, uh, that word controls, how does the love of Christ control us? Well, it controls us by not saying bad things about people. It controls us to the point that we won't, don't have to have our own way all the time. I want you to see something there now. For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us. We're talking about the motivation of a man. We're talking about the motivation of a Christian. What motivates you? Well, I just like to do this or I just like to do that. Well, that, that, you know, that's fine. It ain't sin. That's because you like to do it. But when you do something for people or, or in the work of God, is it the love of God that compels you, urges you, moves you to do that? I was thinking about um, Susan and me when our, we, first, we had our kids, you know, we had three kids and, and, I, and, and God has been teaching me a lot about love. And, but I thought back the times at night when the kids had, were crying and Susan would get up and go in there and have to change her diaper and maybe rock them a little bit and put them back to sleep. And I, I would think back in those days, boy, she is sacrificing a lot. You know, to have to get out of this warm bed and, and, and to just take care of that little kid. But then as I begin to understand and God began to deal with me about love, it was no sacrifice to her. Because love enables you to do things graciously, with kindness. So glad to do it. Spencer's been painting our house and working on our garage over there, and he's doing a great job. And Susan's fixed, about two and two and a half hours, she's fixing dinner for us. And we come in and eat it, and in 15 minutes, you know, we burp a few times, and then get up, and, and, and we go back to work. But she spent, you know, two and a half hours in, in a hot stove cooking things that we all like. And I thought, boy, that's, that's, that's really a lot of sacrifice. And it wasn't. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Because love gladly gives of itself. Gladly. Now, we're all learning. I, I'm not saying I'm 100%. I'm learning all this too. I don't have any more bricks to throw. I done threw them all away. I threw them all at people. I, I want us to grasp this message because, because if, you, if you're resisting it, it shows me that your soul is in control. Because I am preaching the pure word of God. Now look what it says. For the love of Christ, and I want you to know if you are, I still love you. You know why? Because the love of Christ urges me and compels me and controls me to love the unlovely. 
because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. And that old life died in Christ. And now we are new creatures in Christ. New creatures in Christ. And therefore, it's just a matter of obeying the Word of God. Let the Word of God sift us. Let it show us where we're missing the mark. We're not talking about hell and heaven here. If you trusted Christ as your personal Savior, you're saved. But we're talking about conduct. We're talking about being conformed into the image of the Son of God. See, that's God's ultimate plan for all of his children, that we become like Jesus. Then you're going to really have revival. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? Say, See, it's an inward work of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has been poured out into our heart to teach us, to direct us, to guide us, to empower us, to change us from glory to glory until we finally come into the image of God in our inner man. I want to share a little bit more now here on this scripture, the next scripture. Look at 19 now, 19. Uh, back to Ephesians uh, three nineteen. I might even let you go a little early today. I'm getting hungry myself. Uh, here we go. Ephesians three nineteen. Now, look what it says. Now Paul's talking. He's been praying. He's talking to the Ephesians. This is what he's talking about. That you may really come to know. Catch that. Practically, through experience for yourselves, the love of Christ. <sighs> Which far surpasses mere knowledge. Remember we were talking about, really, you are talking about the knowledge, the, the soul, Say, it, love passes the, the, the mere knowledge of man. God is love. And you have to experience him to his, in his fullness. Which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled through all your being spirit, soul, and body, unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Not only individually in our individual bodies, but in the body of Christ. If you can comprehend that, mark it down, read it when you get home, because you're going to have to study it and let the revelation of that get in your spirit, and, and God will do that work. Now, look at verse 20. Oh, Lord, I, I, that's a big task. I, I don't think I could ever, ever able to do that. No, you're not going to be able to do it. You've got to let him do it. Now to him, Paul says, who by, in consequences uh, of the action of his power that is at work within us. Now what's our job? To let his power work in us. And it is able to carry out his purpose. Yeah. Woo! Boy, you know, we could be discouraged, but let me tell you something. He's able to carry out his purpose of changing us from glory to glory into the image of the Son of God. I used to read these scriptures. I say, God, no way. Because I was dependent upon my own self and my soulish thinking that somehow I thought I could somehow become like Christ in my own effort. No way, Jose. Your faith now must be turned towards God. Now you know what he wants to do. You've got your scriptures. Meditate on them. 
and let God do the work. Now look what it says. Is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think intimately beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Whew. Now that should change your whole course right there. Our whole course should be changed today. And we say, Lord, I don't want to live out of my soul anymore. I want to live out of the spirit. I want to live by, by the, the, the life of another. I want to live by the life of another. Because the Bible says that in uh, Romans 8, verse 2, it says that the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death, which comes out of our soul. Let our faith, let our faith go into what God wants to do and he will do it. And each day as you pray, beginning to thank him for working in you, separating by using his word to separate and you're finding out what is soulish, what is of your spirit, and what is of the flesh. Over in Galatians, one more scripture, and I'll let you go early today. And somebody said, hallelujah. Galatians 5, 22, I think it is. Yep, yep. All right, Galatians, where you is? There, we're getting to it now. Yep, that's it. Galatians 5.22. Now to him who by inconsequence. No. Galatians 5.22. I want to read that, but that ain't the one I wanted. I wanted Galatians 5.22, but let's read that one. In this freedom, now Christ has set us free has made us free and completely liberated us. Stand fast then and do not be hampered and held ensnared and submit again to a yoke of slavery which you have once put off. Now Paul is talking about the Jewish laws and everything, but there's a real freedom in Christ that he brings us into and it's up to us to stand fast in that liberty. Okay, Galatians 5.22, here it is. So, notice this. An apple tree bears what? Apples. Does it strain? Does it grunt? It abides. And we know that it draws the nourishment that it needs into the trunk, through the trunk, the, on up through the tree and through the branches, and it bears apples. They shall know us by our what? Fruits. So, but the spirit of the holy but the fruit of the holy spirit the work which his presence notice this within accomplishes whew, wow how many see it is love joy gladness peace patience and even tempered forbearance Kindness, goodness, benevolence, and faithfulness. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're just a tree. If we abide in him and let his love abide in us, and we get grounded and rooted in his love, and talk to God about it, he's going to show you more about this thing. Willie is clearing a lot of things up back there in the Sunday school for the men, and we're going to... And he's going to have the opportunity to share it with the whole church pretty soon. So this week, take courage. Get your mind off of, your soul off of soulish stuff. You should have as much concern for this world as a dead person. <laughs> John, I mean, uh, Paul says that. And set your mind on heavenly things and let God continue that work in you. And then you will be a happy man. Uh, Spencer came the other day and was talking about this musician uh, that, that was successful. I don't know anything about him. I don't listen to his music or nothing. But he had, I think, six children and 
very successful man, and he committed suicide. Had everything. Famous. How many have seen that on the television or whatever? Come and explain that to us because I think that's so important because the soul life will ultimately destroy you and destroy your family and society and the church. We have got to let the Word of God divide and show us in our own life, not in your brother's life, don't look at nobody else, in my own life, and let God do the change. Now tell us about this brother. Okay, this brother... Um came he, he was a very famous musician the name of the band is Lincoln Park it's a it's a worldly group um, most of you are probably not familiar with it but I'm familiar with him because when I looked into his life his life was more to me the talent and the gift that God gave him and back before I became more of a Christian I was listening to his music um, and I prayed about it you know he, he had he was married twice um, I, had, I did some research on his life um, and found out a lot more about him because, you know, when I had found out, it just kind of, you know, because I had followed him for so long. But this gentleman was very successful, world-renowned musician, greatest number one band in the world, okay? Um, but what, what I didn't know, and I prayed about it, I said, Lord, why, how does this man go from having all this success and just, you know, world-renowned, number one band in the world. And, you know, I kept thinking, and then I was saying it to myself, world. You know, Jesus, he didn't know Jesus. Obviously, he didn't. And that's what I wrestled with because a lot of y'all don't know the story behind my life, but my mother committed suicide. And it was like a flared-up, scar within my heart you know when I had found out about this because I've wrestled with this for years you know trying to figure out well why do people do this and it was real simple God said you know spoke through the word he said you know what profit a man if he's to gain the whole world but to lose his life it profit him nothing this man lost his soul due to you know not knowing who Christ was doesn't matter how successful you are. It was an eye-opener for me, you know, and God had to deal with me about it. He was like, hey, the man was not from me, was not of me. He had put his trust in, not even in himself. He came from an abusive family. He was molested as a child. Um, so he had, he had to overcome a lot of things, but his overcoming was in himself. Remember what you were talking about in the Sunday school, self. He had put his trust in himself, and he lost his life and his soul. The devil came and collected. And I can't even imagine what was going through this man's mind when he did that. I can't even imagine what my mother, when it was going through her mind, she was in torment and pain. I knew that much. And I'm not saying my mother didn't know Christ. There was a lot more situation there than you know, I care to express right now in words, but the main thing is, is that, you know, be thankful that you know who Christ is and Christ knows you because there are, it is real. This, the reality is, is that we see these people, no matter how much money he's, he left behind a wife and six children, six, six children is successful to me. That's a lot of responsibility that he's left on somebody else now because he chose a different route than what you and I would ever. You know, and, and that was the point of what I wanted to say too, and I'm glad you called me up here. It doesn't matter how bad your life gets. I mean, I had to face that when I was eight years old, when my mother decided to take a different route in life. But it doesn't matter how bad in your life that something gets, that is not the right choice to make for any of us that's a reality check you know of who who you and 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 even i've discussed this with him he's led people to christ that still did that that still took their life and and beyond me to understand why somebody would choose to do that but i'm not in that dark area of my life thank god god brought me out into the marvelous light Amen. thank you thank you Unfortunately, even Christians 
Many of them commit suicide. That breaks my heart. But see, if we don't let God deal with that old soul life that's been programmed by this world, about our, father, our fathers and mothers that programmed us to be successful, you've got to be, have all these degrees and, is that what you call them? Degre <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting that down, but we're talking about reality here. If you don't have it right on the inside and right with God 24-7, the devil's sneaky. And Paul was a very, very afraid of the Corinthian church that they would be deceived like Eve was. You read that in Corinthians. What you got for us? Would you go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.14? 2 Corinthians 5.14. What holds you together? What holds you together? Absolutely. And in the King James Version, it actually says, For the love of Christ constraineth. Constraineth. Well, that word constraineth means, are you ready for this? Holds us together. To keep us in union. Oh. With or together. His love holds us together. It keeps us as human beings in union with him and with one another. Where there is love, like Ms. Susan was, was um, rehearsing 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where there is love, there isn't this berate, berating and backbiting and anger and doubt and fear and blah. God holds us together. God is love. He constraineth us for the love of Christ constraineth, holds us together, his love. How many of you, when the presence of God comes in, no matter where you are, whether you're here at home, when his presence comes in, oh, you feel the oneness, you feel the union, you feel that togetherness, that oneness with him. And that is what we're to have with one another, unreserved, transparent with one another. Amen? Amen. His love will hold you together. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you've already shed your love in our hearts. And it's a matter of us walking in the Spirit and letting the Spirit manifest in our lives and through our lives. We thank you, Lord, that many of us are doing that. And there's times we get off track, but Lord, you're bringing us all back together today to get on that track of love. Yes, Father, love your love, Father, unconditional love that we're talking about here. Unconditional love. That's what you loved us with, and that's what we're to love others with. Unconditional love will hold us together. Thank you, Lord. If anybody is here that needs to come up for prayer, may they come up. We'll be glad to pray for them. If they need to go to somebody and ask for forgiveness, let them feel free to do that. Whatever it may be, Lord, may we do your will and we thank you now for the food that we're about to eat and the fellowship that we will share. In Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen.